Yeah, the, the black smoke. He was stealing. Right? We are the sun. Right, everyone's in, yes. Okay, I will pull Yeah, I'm going to pull it. Here. Mr. Adelaide? Here. Ms. Greenfield? Here. Ms. McCready? Here. Mr. McQueen is absent. Mr. Rivera? Here. Mr. McNair? Here. Notice of this meeting was provided to the Burnsville News and Courier News by the municipal clerk and posted on the municipal bulletin board on December 15th, 2022. Please stand for the I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for the Sense, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To the June 12th, 2023 meeting of the Burns and Borough Council. This meeting is being conducted in person in the council chamber in Borough Hall. It is being broadcast live on YouTube and on Zoom to make it as convenient as possible for residents to attend the meeting. Members of the public who are here in person, and those attending remotely on Zoom, will be given the opportunity to comment at appropriate times during the meeting in accordance with the following guidelines. Members of the public will be allowed to speak during the open session and during formal public hearings on the agenda, including public hearings on ordinances. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker, which will be monitored and enforced by the borough clerk. Comments containing offensive, profane, or indecent language or language constituting hate speech will not be permitted. Remote participants will be muted unless they are unmuted by the clerk and remote participants will not be able to unmute themselves. The clerk will mute remote speakers at the expiration of their three minutes of allotted time or if they make any inappropriate or offensive comments. All speakers, whether in person or on Zoom, shall state their name and address before making their comments. Speakers on Zoom shall activate their cameras so that they can be seen by members of the governing body and the audience. Failure of the governing body to provide a live broadcast of this meeting or technological problems encountered during the course of the meeting that affect remote viewing and or participation will not invalidate this meeting or any action taken, including but not limited to the adoption of any ordinance, resolution, or motion. I just got a text in the chat that said 725 is this estimated time. So hopefully yeah. he'll be here shortly. We'll talk stuff. Yes, so we'll talk there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, our presentation tonight is downtown Burnersville on the light pole banner project, which I also witnessed firsthand. So pretty cool. Very cool. Um, we will show like a little video, ten seconds with my uh, slides. Okay. Yeah, so the slides. The five person. Then. Yeah, please. That'd be great. Um. <clears throat> Over the last few years, we've had these fabulous hometown heroes banners, and every time they go up, I can't help but notice how much it beautifies the town. Um, and granted, they are very well done. I had the pleasure of being a part of that whole project when it was first launched and picking which one would look best and what have you. And it was just, it was a really nice experience and it came out really well. They just, I love seeing them. And I know the community loves them as well, not just for the way they look, but also obviously the honor of our veterans is really important to the community. Um, so there's a number of things with this project that we are hoping to accomplish. Um, <clears throat> so let me start with about and why we're here. If you can go to the next one, please. Um, so what we are, um, considering is working with a company called Breeze Automated Banner Systems. And I first encountered them um, at the Main Street Conference earlier this year, and they had a, a display there. And uh, well, again, I'll have a video up for you guys so you can see what we're talking about. Um, but essentially it's an automated system. So it's essentially a power drill with a, a power drill, a power drill with a uh, bit um, and that allows it to go up and down automatically to easily put the banners on and take them off every time you need to do that. Now, so far, we've only been doing the Hometown Heroes, which twice a year, why do you need an automated system? So we are hoping to expand the project a little bit more. The banners can stay as they are. We don't need new banners. We can keep them with this new system. Um, but we are hoping to expand a little bit more to offer messages of welcome. If it's a holiday time, say, you know, happy holidays, whatever we would say. Uh, but also showcasing specific events and things going on in the town. So uh, this October, we're going to be doing a lot of 
um, history related activities. So on banners, having a person of note, uh, a location of note, a story of note, whatever that might be. Um, and obviously they would be visually appealing, but it would be terrible. But having various concepts of banners throughout the year um, so that things can be refreshed and upgraded and it can lend to the beautification of the town. Um, and then offering a little bit more for folks to look at too, which could potentially lead to slowing down some traffic, which especially on our main corridor is always an issue. And everybody knows, especially those not in your heads, how much I love the traffic in town. Um, so we're hoping that that is a, a part of it as well. And then obviously adding that color vibrancy for the community. Uh, this system is also something that we could consider as wayfinding signage, at least preparing for wayfinding signage moving forward. Because we have 202 and we have a limitation of the state highway, adding more signs, we, we tried to do the welcome to Bernardsville and that was next to impossible. So uh, you know, having this already up on a banner alleviates the need for a post, a new sign, approval, et cetera. We can put um, various wayfinding elements along where that banner goes and with this system. Um, and Breeze, the company that we've been speaking with, uh, are actually working on wayfinding to go with this system as well. So it's just something to consider for the future, but if we put the system in place now, then at least we're prepared for that moving forward. There's one less hurdle to jump. Next, please. So that was what the program is, but why do we want to do it? Um, it's very powerful for promoting the community. And it's not just about the events that we do. It could necessarily be, uh, you know, the, the students are graduating high school, congratulations, class of 2023, 2024, whatever the case may be. Um, again, it could be, like I mentioned before, the history and honoring our history and our, our culture and who we are as a community. Um, so along those lines, you know, beautifying the space as well, like we mentioned before. Um, it also, in a way, helps support the small businesses because the more that folks see are going on in town, uh, the more likely they are to stop and check out and see what's going on and know that things are happening so they can put it on a calendar if it's an event coming in. Uh, Restaurant Week would be a great example of something that we could promote right after the 4th of July when the Hometown Heroes comes down for Restaurant Week up and all the cars that do drive through town, even though it's slower in the summertime, they still have an opportunity to know, oh, they have a Restaurant Week. I need to write that down or I need to know that and come back later. Um, and then, of course, it gives us an opportunity to share our voice. You know, a lot of conversations have happened up until now where folks are, you know, well, we don't want to be like Somerville or like all these other towns. But at the same time, you know, we have a solid framework to get us ready to be as successful as those towns while having our own voice in the process. And these banners can really share that message as well so that people know who we are, that we are Bernardsville, and this is what it means to be Bernardsville, which is pretty cool. Next, please. Uh, so this is the suggestion of how the framework of this program could work. Um, it is the automated banner system, and I think now would probably be a great time, Anthony, if you don't mind switching to that video. It's uh, literally a yeah, you some, you yeah. that. Do you want to just explain the process now to get those banners up? Uh, like how it would work? You no, know, how we do yeah. it now. Oh, how we do it now. Uh, from what I have been told, it takes days. <laughs> not just hours, but days for DPW to go and put those banners in. Um, and then they're borrowing a bucket truck from a, a, I mean, Glenn Miller's fabulous, but it's his company. So there's liability on that as well. Um, so that would, uh, this process would eliminate the need for a bucket truck, number one. You really just need a ladder to just go up, slide the banner on the two prongs, and then drill it up in place. So as you can see with this video here, you slide the banner on and off, and then it automatically goes up with the drill that's on the bottom there. Um, and they do have a very uh, high rated uh, wind, whatever it's called. Uh, so if the wind comes through and it's very strong or whatever, it actually doesn't, um, it, it, it's uh, high rated. I can't even think of what the word is called, but um, there's another video on their website that shows very strong winds. You can see the tree blowing and the banner not even moving. Uh, there is a black one, so don't be alarmed by the silver color. Oh, there's a black one as well, which is like the one we would go for because obviously our light bulb is going to black. Uh, there's not going to be a stark, ugly mechanism there. Uh, Thank you. Yes, of course. I would not go for that if it was crow. I don't care for crow myself. Um, so that's that's really what it comes down to as well, is alleviating the burden on our DPW. 
and for you guys to have to go in there and schedule and you know do all that work and that takes days to put up and take down especially if we want to do more banners throughout the year if the if the decision is no we don't want to do any banners throughout the year it's hometown heroes only then it's probably not necessary to spend the money to put the system up um because it's only a couple times a year but at the same time i mean it's a really really great use of the product that just gets it up and done in no time um our design team obviously with my um you know, coordination would be the ones responsible for making sure that it's going up and down. We would be scheduling this ahead of time. Uh, so we would be preparing an annual calendar to say these are the dates and this is what's going up when, and we would be set for the year so everybody knows what's going on when. And then our team would again um, will work with Breeze directly and just you know make it happen. Breeze also can come and do the install for us, um, which would allow them to maintenance the systems and be there and make sure nothing's broken in the process. So if we have somebody else do it broken and nobody knows why and we have to pay for it so they can also come in and do that for us too um next slide so this is what a sample timeline could look like and this is based on you know the rest of this year um you know, having restaurant week going up right after the fourth of july um after that we could do something like welcome to burnsville something that we wanted to do with the big sign um, that we were not able to do so we can do it in this format instead uh honoring our history with all the history events that are coming up in october the hometown heroes i believe goes back up for veterans day through the month of november i think that was correct as far as the dates go there uh and then having some sort of holiday message for the end of the rest of the year um for next year this is a really great opportunity for all the centennial things that we've got going up here um, so this could be really, really uh, beneficial to help promote all of the things that we're doing and also the history and various aspects of uh, what's going to be going on next year. Um, but again, you know, we did Faces of Burnersville with the Cultural Arts, Art, Cultural Arts Committee uh, a couple of years ago. You know, that would be a really great opportunity to have them, their faces on the banners. You know, there are lots of opportunities that we can be creative about moving forward with what shares our culture for Burnersville. Um, again, I want to reiterate that Hometown Heroes, none of that will change, not, not, it's not affected, we can still use the same banners, we don't have to buy new ones, um, and the Recreation Department can still manage that process, it's not something that we necessarily need to take over, so nothing would change on that front, um, we would just get the system put in. Um, and I should make sure that you know that I'm not asking you for money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've already done that this year. Um, we're still working on that part, but uh, this in part would be paid for by um, Mainstream New Jersey did just release a small grant for this year, thankfully. Um, so we did uh, put a portion of that in there, and then the rest would come out of our budget as well. Um, the project all in is about ten or twelve thousand dollars to put the automated system in, get a whole new banner up, um, and then have them install and take down for at least two times. And how much do you set of banners if you're? Um, I have to ask him that because uh, he included the banner and the price, so yeah. I didn't I didn't go further to figure out what that yeah, just would be. Yeah. yeah, it was really just a lump sum to kind of get the, the first thing. Okay. Yeah. Council has to include the content, correct? Well, that's part of why I'm here today. So if you can do the next one for me, Anthony, because uh, those are those are the three. So um, the approvals that we're looking for from you guys would be determining whether or not the automated system can go in place, uh, expanding that banner program and what that entails and then you know working with you guys or the annual calendar and how exactly we want to approach that process I have a yes for restaurant week there's uh there's no way you could reuse the banners again you if we put there. dates on it no i know obviously you don't put a date but yeah but wouldn't it be better to just do burnsville restaurant week yeah yeah absolutely uh, there's no sort of like second week in july it's always the second july yeah i mean like if you that. haven't done it in july you used to do it in january so this is the first or whatever yeah and so then, it's but then you that you used it yeah oh yeah i mean that's that's so, the goal i asked them to do a quick mock-up and this is what they gave me and this was like friday so uh we definitely have some uh back and forth to do as far as designs go but you know the, the idea is it's it's more about the idea and, and figuring out whether or not this is something that makes sense for us. And if it does, then we can go back into the specifics and take more time and make sure we do the right things. Yeah. Um, but if you want to approve the designs, we can certainly do that. But again, the, the idea is for the calendar to be scheduled at least a year in advance. Uh, that way it allows us all the opportunity to say, great, 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 okay, let's do it. And then 12 months goes by and then we can talk about it again. We don't have to do this every single time we're putting new banners up, which gets off to the 
I don't think we need to get to the level of approving your copy. Um, you know, you can just run it by right. Nancy and Jack. Or the concept of just of what they're bad like the restaurant we yeah, 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 just kind of the time. Yeah, kind of like the time like before. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, that's no problem. I would have assumed so. I don't care about that. Yes. I would have assumed so, yes. Okay. Um, the only uh, final thing I wanted to share with everyone, um, it's not just really about the banners, but I wanted to make sure that you were all aware of what we are doing. Last time I talked to you guys about what has happened, it was our annual report, which is December. Um, Anthony, if you could do the last slide for me, please, that would be great. Um, so just so you know what we're planning on working on this summer, I actually just hired an intern. She started today. Yay! Um, she's going to be great. She's uh, doing marketing work with us, so um, and she's going to be wonderful. So I'm very excited to have the help in the office so we can execute a lot of these things. Um, but this summer, we're going to be working on doing a walking audit of downtown, uh, just determining the uh, safety and pedestrian needs in the district. We are constantly focusing on cars and parking and traffic. And I'm really hoping that we can start shifting that conversation because I can't tell you how many businesses keep telling me nobody's walking around. I want people to walk in the main store and it never happens. So we need to start shifting that in some way. So we're going to start with doing this audit to see what it means to walk in our town. Um, I did get some really great contacts with New Jersey Transit really excited about this, I'm very nerdy, mm -hmm. um, to, uh, they're going to do a site visit, we're just working on scheduling that to check out the train station itself and beautifying the space um, and making sure it doesn't smell like the human, you know, wet in the back um, and a number of other things. And they're really excited about working with us. So there's going to be some art discussed, there's going to be some um, updates of the grassy areas there. So really excited about that. So that'll be great too. I do also want to make sure all of you know that Main Street America is coming to Bernardsville on July 18th and they're going to be touring the district. Um, they do want to speak to mayor and council or whomever is available that day that might want to kind of talk about it without me in the room. So you feel free to say whatever you need to say. So I do invite you if you can. I think there's like a 45 minute block. So it's not really a whole lot of time. I'm going to be meeting with a lot of different folks. Um, but this is a big one. It's not the state level, it's the national level programs. Checking in on us and see how things are doing and what we need from them. Um, we are working on building a, a business launch boot camp. Um, hopefully, we'll have that launch sometime in January, but we are partnering with SCORE, and I've had great calls for the New Jersey Business Action Center as well. They're going to be providing us with tons of resources to help folks learn how to start their business. Um, and the goal here is that at the end, we'll do like a a Shark Tank type of event and get folks to compete for their business idea and give them some grant funding and they open their business in town and hereby filling our empty storefronts. So um, the folks I've talked to so far are very excited about this and I think it's going to be a really great program for the community. Uh, of course, just so you know, movie nights are coming up at the pool. Um, we do have an adult night, 21 and over only on July 18th. Um, so please do keep that on your list. Um, and if you can see right next to our logo is another logo that says Main Street Bernardsville. Um, it's the unofficial announcement that we are going to be rebranding. We will be uh, launching this officially sometime in September, roughly around the 5K. Um, but we will be switching from downtown Bernardsville to Main Street Bernardsville. And uh, there's a number of reasons for this, but the number one is to be a little bit more inclusive in the whole community. We are covering the entire district. So it's important that everyone knows that we're not just downtown, we're having nothing to do with redevelopment. It is just you know what we do near Main Street. So I'll look for that coming up soon as well. So if there's any other questions or any other information I can share with anyone, I'm happy to do so. So just a quick consensus. Are we okay with this whole process? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, when the video came on, which was great, the demo video, it showed Montclair. Do you know what their other clients are besides? Uh, I believe Garfield is one of them. Uh, they're a New Jersey based company. Yeah. Um, right. So I don't know all of their clients, but I know he has quite a few in, in the state. Yeah. So and did national. They provide any referrals or? Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, my third is a great referral. We definitely brought him up a few times. Uh, the gentleman, Howie Stern, actually came into town and looked at the, the banners that we have, and you know, he, he said they're all great. Obviously, it's a manual system, so it's a little bit different. Um, but he said it's, it's a perfect place. Do you know how many poles we have? Uh, we have 29 banners. Okay. So some poles have two. 
Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we have 29 in total. Yeah. So there'll just be one banner on each pole. Any of the poles that have two, there will be two. two. We oh. are, it's a direct replacement. So it'll look exactly the same. It's just it'll be the automated system. And the last question I have is I've seen them where it's like every so often one of the banners is these banners are sponsored by, you know, whatever business. Yeah. So do you think that would be something that we consider like ever? Like allowing a business to advertise on those benefits. Just to be a sponsor. Okay. Yes. Um, so this is how towns make it a lucrative program by offering that. Uh, I'm hesitant to do that right out of the gate, only because you know we, we want to do this to beautify the town. And when we start having all these promotional things going on, people are going to be like, "Oh, we're advertising," you know, you know, things go. So right now, the goal is not necessarily to do that. In the future, if we find this program is very successful and they're knocking down our doors and we can find a way to make it look nice in the process, then sure, we'll open the door up to that. But right now, it's not meant to be a money-making opportunity or at least cover itself as far as costs go. When our, when our budget comes around every year, we will simply just have a line item to account for whatever needs to be done with the, the systems and getting the banners in and out. You don't want to have too much verbiage on them because you don't want people to be looking at that and trying to read it and squinting while there's somebody crossing the crosswalk and then we're not in the crosswalk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 so it, it is while well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a billboard, right? And you have about three seconds to read whatever the, the information is. So, yeah, there it's not meant to have lots of small writing on it. It's like the restaurant week when they're, you know, date. What it is, and then they can find out more. Although when you're sitting at the light, it would give you something to do. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's it's really great real estate for promotion, right? So you just put a QR code on there, and then when we get more people walking around, yeah, they can scan the QR codes of that, right? So right now, for the first six months, first year, I'm I'm all about keeping things simple sometimes, and just starting small and working our way up. Seeing how we use it, you know, yeah. right, and see what kind of feedback we get. Um, you know, that's that's the most important thing. I always like to listen and, and hear what people are saying about these things, and so we want to make sure that we're doing it right. I just wanted to ask Nancy about the because if once they go up, then the the company's going to do it first. Going, you know, changing the banners out is that going to be the responsibility of the DBW still? And and then I just want to get Nancy's kind of thoughts. Is that really good? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's 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 our our discretion. So, like I mentioned, it could be a line item in our budget every year, and they replace it five times, and that's that's it. That's what we decide to do for our annual calendar. And we just simply pay for them to come out and do it. But uh, the the yes, yes, yeah. Because they, they could do them. those the, the specialty ones, and DPW could continue to do the whole town. Here. Right, right. And we can very easily show them. I mean, I could practically go on a ladder and do yeah, it. Yeah, and we can take them for that. <laughs> take them three days to do it. Well, yeah, and that's that's the idea because we need yeah. to do a lot of other things as well. So yeah. we don't want that. So much. And I actually, they were also at the uh, conference of mayors in May that I went to and. So it displayed. It is. It is really very impressive. I mean, it's seconds. That once yeah. you put the drill in and the banners on, it's literally seconds. It's up. It's taut, and it's it's day fire to get some of it. So, I mean, I was going to ask you about how many we have because I've driven through some towns now. I think maybe the one I'm recalling, maybe Scott Plains. They have. I mean, of course, there's a thousand plus kids in a grade there. or group five. We don't have that many, but we only have 29. I was thinking about for the seniors. For school, because that's what they have in such planes. They've got all those people out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that is so cute. It is cute. I don't think I'm like targeted like a random nice freak out. Yeah. Anyway, there's just opportunities. Yeah. opportunities. Congratulations, Congratulations to class. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, that might be what we have to do. But eventually, once we get more light poles in yeah. from the rest of town as well, you know, there's obviously yeah. room to grow. So starting small, making it work. Yeah. 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 I think we're good with it. So yeah, so just keep us Thank updated you. as you progress. Fabulous. I'm sure how everything grows. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you, Lacey. All right. So Nancy, are you okay? <laughs> Um, I mean, I talked to John earlier today, and he said that while the process will be faster, um, because they, well, they didn't need to put up a ladder until he two died, but the actual putting it up will be faster, 
if they have to do it six times a year, you know, right. it's yeah. really so yeah. hearing that at least for the first year, the company's gonna do it. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right. Please hear. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thank you, Olivia. Um, you. We are now at the open session for items not listed for a public hearing. So again, all the things I said in the beginning apply. Make sure you give us your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Um, and again, this is not a QA, and a it's an opportunity for the public to make a comment. So um, if you would like to, I think we have some people on Zoom um, and some of you guys. <laughs> so uh, if you can raise your hand on Zoom with a little hand icon or turn on your camera and wave at us, that would be great. So we know you want to make a comment. I'm not seeing any. No, so I will close the open session. All right, I will open the public hearing on ordinance 2023-1966 and ordinance extending permitted sidewalk sale hours and amending article 12 of the borough land use ordinance entitled zoning. And we do have, uh, we did discuss this at the planning board last week and they were fine with it as well. And I think we have the letter with their with the resolution that they passed. So would anyone in the public like to be heard on this ordinance? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Um, Diane, you want to move that? I move to pass ordinance 2023 1966 on final reading and adopt as published. Um, okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Andelin? Yes. Ms. Greenfield? Yes. Ms. McCready? Yes. Mr. McQueen? Yes. Mr. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Amara? Yes. All right, Jay, you want to move the next one? Uh, I move that ordinance 2023-1969 salary ordinance for employees of the borough of Burnsville who are police dispatchers be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law, and then a public hearing be scheduled for the meeting beginning at 7 p.m. Monday, June 26, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Hey, there, we're the next one. Uh, I move that ordinance 2023-1970 and ordinance amending salary ordinance 2023-1955 be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law, and then public hearing to be scheduled for the meeting 7 p.m. Monday, June 26, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Got the long one. <laughs> <laughs> I move that ordinance 2023-1971 bond ordinance, bond ordinance providing for improvements to municipal property in and by the borough of Burnersville, the county of Somerset, New Jersey, appropriating one million seven hundred thousand dollars, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of one thousand one million six hundred and fifteen thousand. Uh, bonds or notes of the borough for financing such appropriation be introduced by title, passed on first reading, published according to law. That public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning at 7 p.m. Monday, June 26, 2024. Sorry. And this is for some of the dam and the sidewalks. Yes, right. into the rest of the dam and the burns and stuff. Right. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Oh, we have two exceptions. So we still have four votes, so we're good. All right. Um, Christine, we're going to the next one. I move that ordinance 2023-1972, appropriating the sum of 180000 for various equipment and improvements, be introduced by title, pass on first reading, published according to law, and that a public hearing be scheduled for a meeting beginning at 7 p.m., Monday, June 26, 2023. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're going to have a lot of public hearings. I mean, mm -hmm. the <laughs> That's for the it's some, backup? Yeah, it some total work. Sewer. Oh, sewer? Oh, I thought it was. Well, that's not the backup. Yeah, it's the backup. Sorry. Sorry. So I'm holding my mind. Yeah, there's a trade in. Yeah, there's a $12,000 yeah. trade in. Uh, I also didn't buy it. It's cheap. Yeah. Well, I said, so what's a, what's a pistol grit replacement? A lot. It says engineering for pistol grit replacement. Maybe that's the word. 
I think there was something sewer. Okay, I thought it was sewer. Yeah, <laughs> there was something for all the sewer and equipment and it's coming out of the uh, sewer capital. Right. And so it's not being bonded or anything. And then later you have a resolution which authorizes the trading of, yes. of the um, okay. tobacco from, um, not the contract, but that's all. Yeah. yeah. This was a pickup truck with a lift gate in the, in yeah. the area. It's sewer. Thing, so yeah. that's sewer. Okay. <laughs> all right, we're up to resolutions. Um, and we added you added another ABC license. So how many are we still missing? We're just missing one of the active ones, and the two inactive ones have to get okay. cut a little bit from the right. state, and they have a little bit longer uh, than June 30th to renew. So we're almost one. What's the active one we don't have? I, I have to I forget which one, but I'll, I'll contact them. They're, they're just for sort of Yeah, it has to be on the next Yeah, it's got to be on the next Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, anything on here we want to do separately? Yeah. 23-125. Um, on 125, uh, again, we don't at the moment have, um, I mean, this is uh, me doing this. <laughs> Pardon, I mean, I'm just going to, we don't have anybody right now appointed to Quimby and the Quimby committee has been meeting and I have been asking for information and on uh, the contracts and things for Quimby. So that's probably the extra charges. Well, he said that he thought that just for Audi and um, Palmer. Palmer, right? And I think so what he said, Audi and Palmer, he thought another 5,000. And until for those two, until, until the not charging us for the other ones, until the developers take over. Okay. And at what point do the speak of the debt? Can at what point do the developers take over the legal fees? Uh, once you sign the redevelopment agreement. Okay. Uh, but each redevelopment agreement will go over tonight, the draft of it, and the executive. Um, and it's all them. So you, they pay for some of the work that was already done. Ah. It's about 5000 or something. It's okay. Number. So this 5000 that's on this, they're going to. So uh, you have two redevelopment agreements that we're going to talk about in the executive. One is for the Audi yes. uh, site. The other one is for the Palmer site. There's provisions in both of them uh, that they have to post at the credit of about $25,000 to cover any costs going forward. But from that, um, it's about five on one and a little bit more on the other one. Um, that you get to recoup some of my costs that we're in front of. Too much on Zabo's cost and things like that. Okay, so I have a question. Sure. So this five thousand dollars that this resolution is for you, mm -hmm. are we going to get that reimbursed? Pretty it's much, yes. I mean, that's yeah. it's it's not a it's not a like for like. It's just a recognition by the redeveloper that the town to get to this point um, incurred some costs and professional expenses. Technically. You're not supposed to be able to hit an escrow until you designated redeveloper. But we already did that with Palmer. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. Right? Yeah. No, 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 we didn't. No, no, no. We only saw the plan, the redevelopment plan. Yeah. Maybe we should speed up a little. Next week, next week, next meeting. Well, we have we have to review his the uh, agreement first. And, uh, but there, there is a, a clawback for a reimbursement of recognizing some of our costs. Okay, but my question is, when are the, these costs going to, uh, you know, I mean, it seems like first it was um, $7,000, then we did another $5,000 a month ago, now we're doing another $5,000, is next month going to be another $5,000? I mean, how, how? Well, here's, here's the one thing, when we did the original resolution, we had no idea how much time Joe was going to put in. So we just picked a number at random. That was not a solid number by any means. That was, that was a number picked by Tom. Right, right, right. Yeah. I wasn't involved in that. It wasn't, he, Joe didn't give us that number and say, it's going to cost you this much. So as we've been progressing with these two different projects. And quite frankly, I mean, comparatively, if you went to other projects in other towns and things like that, the amount of time that I've built to this is not. Really accepted in some in a lot of respect for two redevelopment projects to say that uh, your attorney time is 
you know, 20,000, 25,000 is not, quite frankly, a lot for the amount of back and forth and meetings and things of that nature. Uh, and then 23-127, Jack, that is the that, green, the, uh, uh, green acres for yes. the encroachment on Correct. the road. Yeah. Okay. Finally taking another step of yes. that process. Well, I, I got, I think, all the maps now. From all the maps. Okay. I can't believe this has been how many years I've been working on this. Really? I don't yeah. want to think about it. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Anything else? All move resolutions 23, 119, June 127, Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Mr. McLean? Yes. Mr. Green? Yes. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Mr. Anderlein? Yes. Okay. Um, mayor's update. Um, so it was May 23rd. Uh, Nancy and I met with Bank Leaf Engineering to go over the initial assessment report. You recall we had a study done to see if the Highlands was an option. Um, he was very complimentary. He said we have a very robust master plan, an open space plan. Uh, the next step is to apply for the, there's an, another grant that then takes us a little further into the process where we actually get feedback and think from the Highlands uh, as to if there's any changes we need to make. But um, again, they have a grant to pay for that. So. Um, where are we right now with that? I think we're we have, yeah, we have a meeting on the 29th. Right, right. Okay. Um, so we have so much of kind of planning. And um uh John Zabo is reviewing the police report. Okay. And, yeah, that's right. They told us to have our planner and engineer look at it. Right. Um so we're waiting for that, and then we're having a meeting on the 29th with Walker Lane, and then figure out after that what the next step is. Okay, but we're moving it along. Um, we had a centennial committee meeting. The logo contest is still open. So any artists out there who would like to design a centennial? We have three, three submissions so far, so we could still take more. Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? June 30th is the last day? Uh, we extended it to July. July 30th. Yes. Oh, okay. So didn't really sit All right. So you've got another one. Yeah, get creative. Um, November, the November 4th kickoff, uh, we are going to be renamed it back in time at Upton Pine. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we are looking for people to help with that event. We have lots of different committees pulling that together. So if anyone would like to be involved in that, it would be a fun, fun thing to do. And then what we decided to do was each month we'll celebrate a decade with some kind of an event. It may not be, it may not be a big thing. Uh, it might just be a movie night or you know not a big fancy expensive thing, but just something commemorating. Like January would be the twenties, February would be the thirties, you know, and and all different things. Uh, one of the things we talked about, see France here, is February is maybe doing a history of immigration in Bernardsville. You know, who are the people that came here and what did they contribute to have a display of some kind? So, yeah, we got a lot of different ideas going around. So, um, also on the 24th, um, I was honored to receive the Millicent Fenwick Award from the Somerset County Federation of Republican Women. Thank you. Uh, Nancy was there and Al was there. So, thank you. Um, we had the Memorial Day Parade on the 29th. The weather cooperated. I think it was really. Um, you know, a few people commented that they didn't think it was as well attended as the past, but I think that may have been because of the five day weekend that the kids got. So, a lot of people yes. went away. But those that came, it was great. The speaker was great. Um, it was really well done. Um, I attended my first board meeting for the New Jersey Conference of Mayors. And again, there's a big push to write to your legislators, let them know about the energy tax receipts that we want them back. We want that restored. So if you have a chance, call your legislator and remind them we want that back in the budget. Um, and they also, the league did a special briefing on that as well. I think we ended up with right now 422 mayors that signed the petition to restore them. So 
Uh, the downtown Martinsville car show was was a great event. Great afternoon on a, again perfect weather. Uh, had a really good attend. How many people did you have there? Did you count spectators? Yeah, no idea. A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. I'm gonna look for lunch because that line was so long. It was so long. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I also attended the Somerset County office on anything every year that requires to do a public hearing um, in order to continue getting your federal funding. And it's just really amazing what kind of programs are out there. They always say they're the best kept secret in Somerset County. So um, hopefully we'll be sharing some of that because there's a lot of people in our community who use those services. I attended the Somerset Hills magazine, you know, that new shiny magazine you can get in at home. Um, the publishers had a little mixer for some of their advertisers and businesses at Coco Bay's, which is really well done if you haven't been there. Um, yeah, it's nice, loud, but nice. <laughs> to be a bird's one. Yeah. Very big fan of animals. I, 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 I wish it was still close. Can I change the one? Can I change the one? Yeah, we just moved the sign. I know. They don't want it. I told her to do it. I know. Um, but we had a downtown board of school board meeting, so we heard about a lot of those cool things going on. Um, I attended a library strategic planning committee with uh, working on goal four, engaging the community. Lots of good ideas generated, so um, thank you for the invitation. I had another wedding. I officiated on Friday. This was an interesting story. They actually had a ceremony many years ago, but never did the paperwork. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, we made it official. Yeah. Uh, the farmer's market opened on Saturday. It was mobbed. I don't know if anybody got down there. It was really packed, very busy. A lot of stuff was sold out, and they, they were doing great. So good to see that going. Um, I attended Mr. T's album debut at Dance Local. You can get a copy of his album at the Rebecca Collection. It's really a, a great collection of songs for kids. So a good present. Um, and yesterday, I attended John Tabor's Eagle Scout for Tobers. Court of Honor, um, and I got to present um, a resolution from Congressman Kane. So it was a great event, and what I'd like to do, um, I've done a, a proclamation that I'd like us all to be part of, so I'll just read it to you. Whereas John Tober has proven himself to be an outstanding member of, member of the Boy Scouts of America, and specifically Boy Scout Troop 150, and has achieved the highest rank of Eagle Scout, and whereas it takes years of dedication and commitment to achieve Eagle rank, and whereas Eagle Scouts act as leaders and role models in the community, and whereas the Eagle Scout Award is a distinction that will follow him throughout life and will be a beacon to others of the leadership, quality, and commitment this young man has shown. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and council of the borough of Burnsville do hereby congratulate and recognize John Tober for his achievement of the rank of Eagle Scout. We are proud to have him as a member of our community. Yes, we're all yes. good with that. Second. <laughs> all right. Um, so I'll have Anthony make a nice folder. We'll, we'll do that up great. Um, yeah, he has been amazing. I mean, if you ever come to Reese Across America, he has been, you know, I asked him to help and everywhere he shows up, he's got 12 scouts with him. He's just he's got such great leadership skills. So the troop will do anything he wants them to do. He's, he's terrific. So uh, I think that's it for me. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow I have to go to the first Amboy. <laughs> uh, we are getting a stormwater assistance grant for, I think it's green infrastructure that um, we applied for so let you know I'm accepting it. I don't, I don't know how much it is. Yeah, it's a big secret. Yeah, <laughs> they're just gonna like you know, they wanted us all to come and they're gonna do a clean. Is it for a specific? I don't remember the application for a study for uh green infrastructure, I think, is how you know to look at how our infrastructure is and how we can improve it. We make it greener and less 
harsh on the environment. I don't know what's with you, Chrissy. I think we're at a good scene, but we're going to have a transition. I think we're, I think, you know, you say the engineer applied for all of our right for it. This doesn't have to do with, remember the whole light engineering evaluation that we did? It was, it's not like this, is it? No, no, this is more like our, um, I think it's going to look at the squares of the wastewater and all that and see how we could do it better. We'll find out tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's my story. Yes, we're at. So we have an official date for the um, Motor Vehicle Commission yes. Local Service Unit, July 22nd, uh, which is a Saturday. Um, we we're lucky to get it because they say they don't often do Saturdays. So we were lucky. And they will be here um, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Burnsville Farmers Market. So we took the far end of the farmers market that will be for the bus or van, whatever you want to call it. Um, the woman who heads up the farmers market is excited about it. I think you know it will help maybe attract more people for, mm -hmm. to go to the market. Um, but the thing is that if they don't have enough advanced signups, they won't come. So we're trying to advertise it and get the word out. Um, you can sign up if you already have um, a an article on our website. It's at the top. You just click on it and you go on and you sign on a Google form to, you know, for some of the appointment is just saying that you will be there. You'll, you'll, you have a spot so that if enough people sign up, they'll, they'll come. Because if enough people don't sign up, they won't come. Um, you do need a, a, a time spot um, for the real ID. But and they suggest time slots, which is why you're signing up, but they will take walking. So if they have if their minimums, let's say 25 people, maybe 25 signups, it doesn't mean that they're, you know, that's it. People can just walk up and get their license renewed or whatever. There's a bunch of things you can do. Um actually, I don't know if license renewal is one of them, but you can do your registration, um, you can get your permit for your driver's license, but not your test. You can get a disability placard, a boat sticker, uh, put a veteran designation on your license. You can get a non-driver ID, a name change, and like I said, the real ID. Um, uh, CDL exams, titles, and out-of-state transfers are not performed as a mobile unit. Um, so there's information um, on our website for what you need for the real ID. There's information for, or there's the link where you can sign up. Um, we put it on Facebook, our Facebook page, we put it on our website. So we're hoping, and I'll keep announcing it at every meeting, and hopefully the newspaper will say something. So we'll get there, Charlie. <laughs> so we'll get enough people there. Um, and uh, we got a note from uh, DOT. They're going to be improving the improving the side, the crosswalks on uh, 202. Um, over by the shop right, there's one by shop right, and there's one right in front of PNC Bank and TD Bank. Yes. Right. So they're going to be improving them with um, better signage and lighting, and they're going to have those little buttons that you push when you want to. Wait, really? Yeah. Wow. The crosswalk. Going north on Mount Airy on the way to Prospect. That's looking like the fastest. I'm sorry. Okay. So, uh, if the DOT is going to be in town, I know that the safety um, committee had discussed the, the crosswalk going north on Mount Airy to Prospect. Is there any way to? Oh, adding an extra one. It can be added in that as well. That's the county. Yeah, that's yeah. the yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Okay. Well, the, the, the efficiency of bureaucracy is continuing to mind on that. Um, they didn't say when, but the initial um, letter came in in November, and the uh, I, I was actually on the phone um, with the woman from DOT. We have, we'll talk about that later in executive, but she said, by the way, we sent this letter in November, uh, October, November. Can you just say that you're, you know, are you okay with it? And I talked to 
um, police chief and the DPW director, and obviously they're okay with it. Anything is going to safety. So uh, there's no date on the letter. Uh, I mean, there's no date when they're going to do it. But now that we've given them the okay, you know, hopefully she will get back to me when it's going to be. I assume, I assume this year. Yeah. You know, but and then you say it doesn't just so, so <laughs> no, we don't want it this year. Yeah. Um, and uh, you voted tonight on uh, resolution 126 to amend the contract with Somerset County Transportation. That is just to add um, the senior bus on Fridays, takes people around town, and made a request to add in to go to Kings and Bedminster. So, this, so they did it. Um, it doesn't cost us anymore, mm -hmm. and it just expands the places they go. So, hopefully, it'll expand the um, ridership as well. And I think we're going to do some more advertising of that on Facebook and on our website as well so to get more people aware of it and hopefully more riders. Yeah. And um, I just want to announce that the construction and zoning offices are open now at 7.30 a.m. and will remain open until 4.30 a.m. Uh, 4.30 to 9 a.m. p.m. Um, on most days, uh, there's only one employee who come in at 7.30, someone she's on vacation or out sick. Uh, they, they won't open at 7.30, but when we have enough advance notice, like vacation, we'll also put that on our website the, the days it won't be open. But it's a benefit for the employee, it's a benefit for residents, and for, especially for contractors who always want to get an early start. So um, we think that's a nice addition. Yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right, we have the request from Community in Crisis to do the ribbon hanging that they do every year, the purple ribbons um, for overdose awareness starts on August 31st. Um, we've done this the last two or three years, I think, so everyone okay with that? Yep. Is there an end day that, that they have to be taken down? Uh, I think it's September 30th. Yeah, they usually get um, either the middle school or high school their youth group, whatever they have there, that puts them up and takes them down. Right, so yeah, they'll all be removed by noon on October 1st. All right. Um, we don't have any correspondence. We have any unfinished business? I should mention something real quick. Um, I popped you on a note today, Mayor. Some good news. Um, I brought up uh, issues that residents were having in like the Belleville Charlotte Hill area around Verizon coverage. And um, I got in touch with uh, the Verizon representative and they've been extremely helpful. Um, they've sent network teams out to try to improve the coverage of the area. They've talked to residents personally. They've been very impressed by the uh, service that we've gotten as a borough. So um, I gotta give credit when it's fair to do, right? I'm often complaining about public utilities, but uh, they, they've really done a, a really nice job. I don't know if everything's 100% resolved yet, but. We've seen um, an increase in coverage, and I just want to thank the team that's been helping out for as well. Great. Yeah, I can see your, your email. That was great. It's nice to have good news. Yeah. <laughs> um, new business. I just had one question for you guys. Um, it was in Kathy Peach's letter that she gave us this time. I don't know if she suggested mm -hmm. changing from three minutes to five minutes for public hearings. Um, I don't know if that was something you want to talk about or not. I mean, it depends. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I don't think I would blanket it. Minutes, five minutes. I, I wouldn't blanket it all the time because if there's 100 residents, they could last in two days. Yeah. Um, and we have that so long. Mm -hmm. um, no, but I, it's always I think we do the time. So I discretion yeah. that if I feel like people need to go longer, they can. Right? Is that true, Jack? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we don't, I mean, not to go through the whole ordinance change, maybe we just make it when there's nobody here, there's five people and they want to each talk for five minutes, that would be fine. If there's a hundred people, then we have to enforce the three minutes. Three minutes is a lot longer than it's at. It is, I mean, yeah. Um, then I run an entire company and five minute, three to five minute education transition. So you can do a lot. Three minutes at three minutes. Yeah, it's a, 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 it's I think Burns Township was four minutes, right? <laughs> I mean, not really. Yeah, but, yeah. I think Burns Township's fine. You think that's that's five minutes? That's kind of better. I mean, but maybe it's just a little bit with the flexibility. Yeah, I mean, the flexibility is important. 
Yeah, I mean, look, I, I can't think of times when we had like the three minutes hasn't worked. That's if, true. If you need, and you have a lot of people. Yeah. And we offer multiple sessions and yeah. we always allow people to stand up more than once. You go, go twice, exactly. Right. Except to the first meeting, they get once. Yeah. yeah. Second meeting, they get twice. <laughs> But they can come back up and they look just saying. Yes, yeah. I mean, and a lot of people don't allow that. I, I know that I asked some of the people with the five minutes, they say one and back. So we let people do three and three. <laughs> That's true. All right. Well, something to think about. It's not really. Well, it's not really a big issue. It hasn't been, no. Um, you know, there's a few rare cases. Um, and then in some sense, Instances we did let people go on. I have a question. If somebody, uh, I know they do this at the school board, if somebody is talking for three minutes and their time is up, can somebody else in the audience say, You can have my time? Okay. No. I'd say no. I know we can let it happen once, but it really shouldn't. Yeah. You, you know, I, I think to the point, one of the things that we can get better at is if there's an issue because you're right it doesn't happen very often and the times when, when it does i think we should probably be in a town hall converse format other than council business format and i think it's probably prudent for us to recognize this difference well that's like what when we knew Brian's avenue was going to be such a big kind of deal yeah we went there yeah so, well, there's a difference, you're right, between the two. Well, this is a council meeting held in public. It's not a public hearing, a public meeting. Yeah. It's a council business meeting that we hold in public so people can be here and know what's going on, um, as opposed to like what you did in, in down in the uh, neighborhood, was okay, you know, this is an open format. And maybe we should do more of the formats. It's important. I think that's what I'm yeah. getting from it. I think we need to do more well, we you know, so yeah, it works better at the work session and we switch to the work session format. Yeah. 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 For September. Yeah. yeah. If okay. it's an ordinance that's public comment, those are three minutes too, right? When when it's a public hearing for ordinances, do we use the yeah, no, we yeah. Have to I, I don't think it's actually the ordinance, it's just an obviously yeah. Okay, just something. All right, we are ready for executive. Somebody want to make a motion? I will make a motion to adjourn to executive. I will second. All right, um, we will not be coming back or? Uh, we will not. Okay, so we will not reopen. Um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right.